My name is Evgenia Elinska. I'm a volcanologist at the University of Leeds and I specialize in volcanic gases. There are two main important reasons for wanting to study and monitor volcanic gases. Gases are closely linked to volcanic unrest and activity, and they are one of the most important drivers of volcanic eruptions. And secondly, volcanic gases can have huge impacts on the environment, health, and even global climate. There are tens or potentially hundreds of volcanoes around the world which are degassing. The style of gas emissions can be hugely varied. These photographs show some examples. Gases can be emitted from fumarolic fields or from open craters even when volcanoes are not erupting ash or lava. They can also be emitted during eruptions, ash-rich explosions such as Eyjafjallajökull, Jökull, Mount St. Helens or Pinatubo, or lava-rich effusive eruptions such as from Kilauea volcano in Hawaii or Holotron eruption in Iceland. The style of gas emission and the gas composition vary significantly between different volcanoes and their activity state. Therefore, there are also many different techniques to measure volcanic gases. It depends on several factors which technique is the most appropriate one. For example, we have to assess how easily accessible the volcano is. In many cases, different techniques should be used together to get the most complete picture of the volcano's gas emissions. Actually, only a few volcanoes are regularly monitored for gas emissions, and many volcanoes have only ever been measured from space. These photographs show several different techniques that can be done on the ground when the volcanic gases are relatively easy to access. Samples of gas can be collected into specially prepared containers such as Gigenbach bottles. This is what I call here direct sampling. The samples are then analysed, usually in a laboratory. Direct sampling is a technique which allows the detection of the largest range of chemical components in volcanic gas emissions. Multi-gas stations contain sensors for the most abundant volcanic gases, usually water, carbon dioxide and sulphur, and measurements can be done with high time resolution. The stations can be set up to operate autonomously, allowing the data to be telemetered and processed in near real time. The sampling inlet on multi-gas stations has to be located very close to the gas source. Spectroscopic measurements are based on the principle that different gases absorb certain light wavelengths in the ultraviolet, infrared and visible spectrum. Each gas therefore has a unique spectroscopic fingerprint. One of the advantages of spectroscopic techniques over direct sampling and multigas is that the measurements don't have to be collected as close to the gas source. Spectroscopic measurements also allow measurements of the whole gas plume rather than point sampling from one place. This allows us to calculate how much gas is being emitted by the volcano, and this is what we call gas emission rate or gas flux. Ultraviolet spectroscopic measurements of sulfur dioxide, which is abbreviated to SO2, is the most widely used technique for measuring gas emission rates and is used for operational monitoring at volcano observatories. Gases can also be detected by satellites. This animation shows sulfur dioxide gas emitted by Kilauea volcano on the island of Hawaii in a large lava eruption May to August 2018. The upper figure shows the sulfur dioxide plume animating from the volcano every day and dispersing to the west and southwest. The lower figure shows the sulfur dioxide emission rate, which has been calculated based on the satellite measurements. Whether gases can be detected from space depends on whether the satellite passes over the particular volcano, whether the gases are being emitted in high enough concentrations, and whether the atmospheric conditions are right. For example, clouds can interfere. Sulfur dioxide is currently the only volcanic gas which can be detected reliably and quantitatively from space. This is because sulfur dioxide is relatively easy to detect compared to other gases. It is abundant in volcanic emissions, but practically absent from the background atmosphere. In contrast, carbon dioxide and water are very abundant in the background atmosphere, so that volcanic signal is harder to distinguish. A lot of work is currently ongoing to improve detection of volcanic gases in addition to sulfur dioxide. Atmospheric dispersion of volcanic gases, ash and aerosol particles can be predicted using model simulations in a similar way to how weather forecasts are made. 
This is very useful for forecasting and mitigating the impact of volcanic emissions on populated areas, aviation routes and the environment. The animation shows the simulated dispersion of gas on the left hand side and aerosol particles on the right hand side from a large lava eruption called Holofrain, which happened in 2014 in Iceland. Note how the volcanic gas and aerosol are dispersing away from Iceland and reaching many European countries. Note also that while the dispersion patterns of gas versus aerosol may seem to be very similar at first glance, they're not exactly the same. If this eruption would have also produced ash, the dispersion pattern of the ash would have been different from both gas and aerosol.